is Daily Blast Live. We're talking about what you're talking about. Real, honest, entertaining, live. DBL starts right now. Three, two. Oh, it's a good one. Welcome to DBL. It is Friday. That's right, my Kelly Green co-host. Oh, Kelly Green. Kelly Green. We're feeling it today, August 14th. I'm Tori here with Erica. And Brandon, we hope, is feeling it. Brandon, are you feeling it? He's from home. Uh, absolutely, Tori. And I knew you were going to say something about fashion today, and I tried to whip up a really nice pocket square but it was an epic fail. So this is basic, but I'm glad to be on the show with you two today. Basic hey. is good. I think basic yeah, is good. Yeah, it's like keep it simple. Totally. Completely agree. That's okay. the name of the Thank game. You. Simple Thank today. <laughs> nice. All right. Let's get straight into the United States Postal Service because it's everywhere. It says it needs billions of additional dollars to cover the cost of increased voting by mail. But the president admitted he doesn't support the funding because he wants to restrict how many Americans can vote by mail by making it harder to process the expected surge. Now, the Postal Service has seen some major changes recently due to a new postmaster general. He's cut all overtime. He has told postal carriers to leave mail behind, and some report that sorting machines are being removed from facilities. Now, all of this obviously could negatively impact the upcoming election. So the question is, what do you think of voting by mail, given everything that's going on? On. And may I remind you that a huge study that took over mail-in voting and did it found the error rate to be 0. .00006. And that is fact. You can look it up. Uh, so, but we are going to see problems in this election. Why not support the funding, Erica? Well, I think it's pretty self-serving for this administration because clearly it's voter suppression. Um, and Trump pretty much said that, that he w wanted to limit um, the amount of, or didn't feel that these uh, different states were prepared in order to handle voting by mail. But the thing is, it's not as though voting by mail is this new fangled concept. I can't remember the last time I went to an actual polling place right? and I haven't missed an election. I always get my vote by mail and then I don't even mail it back. I just drop it at the precinct, which is my polling place. So yeah, I, I find it very strange that we're even having this conversation because it very much limits a demographic of people who may not be supporters of the current administration, but also people who aren't able to necessarily leave their homes and that's a lot of people this year especially because the pandemic right, right? mail-in voting for me plus pandemic equals reality uh, the president himself and his wife are voting in Florida by absentee ballot Brandon and they're saying it's safe in Florida but not other places the Postal Service is the backbone of a lot of our nation it gives medicine to a lot of veterans it gives checks it gives everything uh, what do you think about all this and do you think this is self-serving well, I, yes, Tori, but, uh, I'm also an absentee voter as well as uh, a resident of Virginia living in Colorado. I vote by mail uh, every election. But here's the thing. We have a president that he said something and his base or said something, tweets something and his base just runs with it. Now, the ultimate fact check has just happened because yesterday a federal judge that Trump appointed has ordered the Trump campaign to substantiate these claims, come with evidence mm. that substantiates these male voter fraud claims. So I think we're going to hear, it's just kind of putting them in a corner now to where they he has to come out and actually give evidence. He's being fact checked. So, I mean, with 80 some, 81, 82 days left before the election, I think we're going to have more of these type of claims. But at the same time, you're going to see people on this because they want to make sure what's being said is, is, is right and actual and factual as well. True. Brandy Sprung says, so that means you'll not get your stimulus checks, your SSN cards, your driver's license or medicine by mail anymore. Very important. But if you are a postal office worker or you're scared that it might not work for you, write in. We'd love to get your comments to find out it it's going to be a mess guys it's not going to be easy remember florida and the chads i predict messy that's what i worry about well meanwhile the president and his opponent joe biden they don't see eye to eye on requiring everyone to wear a face mask so biden says clearly everyone should wear them in public for the next three months he called on governors to mandate them but the president says that's an attack on Americans' freedoms. Experts estimate that as many as 40,000 lives could be saved if everyone wore 
face masks. Do DBL Nation, we want to know what you think. Do you support a national mandate requiring everyone to wear masks? We want you to go to dblvote.com. We're going to keep this up as we have our discussion so we can see it. Should there be, again, a national mask mandate? There are mask mandates, I mean, excuse me, mandates for seatbelts, uh, speeding limits. Uh, there's lots of mandates that don't interrupt your freedoms, but lead to a better society. Erica, you're nodding. What do you think? Well, seatbelts, I think, is an excellent example, Tori, because anytime someone gets pulled over and they're not wearing a seatbelt, they're not like, I'm going to stand up for my rights. No, they try to gradually <laughs> pull that seatbelt over move, before the police officer gets to the car <laughs> because they don't want to get a ticket totally. because they know that they're going against what protocol and what the law is. So I think that a national mandate would actually be a wonderful thing to try to get this country reopen. Everyone talked about the idea of we need to reopen, we need to reduce, uh, do so safely. There are millions of Americans who are on unemployment right now. This might be a really good way to start that process of getting our country reopened. I'm not having a problem with this at all. Brandon, real quick, do you have a problem with this? And do you feel like, to me, it was like, oh, the adults have come home. Someone's doing a rule and we're all kids and we need one rule for the country. Thank God the, you know, the, the adults have come in the room. How did you feel? I would love one rule, Tori, but sadly, when you say 40,000 people could 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 die or or you could save 40,000 lives, some people honestly don't care because it hasn't hit home for them. So I I would like to, for there to be one rule mandated, but on the other end, people don't care. Yeah, I hear you. Let's go to the vote really quickly. I do hear you, Brandon, and that's as simple as it gets. 84% of you say yes. 16% say no. Um, Michael Loveland says, I'm for masks, but do we still have to wear pants? So that's a very fair question. Okay. I'm just kidding. All right, we're moving on to restaurants. Some of them have been the hardest hit during the pandemic. Now six major restaurant chains are facing bankruptcy, including Denny's. Oh, Sorry, I got sad about that. Outback Steakhouse, Applebee's, and what? The Cheesecake Factory. California Pizza Kitchen, or CPK if you're cool, has already filed for bankruptcy, and an estimated 16,000 smaller restaurants have already permanently closed. Brandon, what are we losing when we lose chains like that? Oh my God, Applebee's? I had my first date at uh, Cheesecake Factory. So, spot. I mean, for some people, you're losing, you're, you're, you're losing not so much a piece of your history, but for some your childhood and just fond memories and all. But, but look, I'm, what I'm worried about is I think there are going to be a lot more that go under because just think about it. A lot of places, a lot of states are only having uh, restaurants open but outdoor seating right. is becoming the fall. Beginning to the winter is going to get cold. What are these restaurants going to do? But uh, yeah, my first date was at a Cheesecake Factory. I'll tell you guys more wow. <laughs> one day. I love the white outfits they wear. <laughs> Erica, people are writing in. The most everyone's writing in is Denny's. 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 And also, this is a conversation about jobs. I as was well. going to say, the people and who a, work there. And right? a lot of these restaurants, some of these restaurants are the pillars of the social community mm. in some of these smaller towns. So, you, it's not as though there are a million different options. Like some towns might only have one of totally. these types of restaurants and the whole, mm. like everything congregates around it. You know, you so, know what also I thought of? It's open 24 seven, most Denny's. And I always felt there was safety there because the lights were always bright. If there was ever a problem, I could go to a Denny's. Hmm. Safety. Interesting. No, I, hey. Safety. There's Denny's. all angles here. <laughs> All angles. True, but it's We're talking about what you are talking well, about. That's right. Well, a terrifying <laughs> animal attack switch, switching gears here was caught on camera. And a warning to our viewers, this video is a little graphic. A woman in South Dakota was attacked at a national park after getting too close to a mother and her calf. Oy. Trying to take oh God, a photo. Another bison charges, catching the oh woman's God. belt Don't with oh. pants, with its horn. Erica's doing color commentary, which I like. The no woman is flung around until she is free of her jeans. She escapes but had to be airlifted oh my God, it got her. to a hospital and is fully expected to recover. She, it, it was serious, though, had to be airlifted. The person who shot it, though, wanted to serve as a warning 
Erica, what are your what is what is your reaction? Oh my god! And get a lot of views on Twitter. And get a lot um, of views on Twitter. I, first of all, I never watch videos when we're when we're talking about videos. I never watch Me them neither. because I need to like have a natural reaction. That is crazy as hell. <laughs> what are people thinking? Honestly, they, that is a wild animal. What are they doing? Like y'all get way too friendly with wild oh animals. God, you act like you really know what it's gonna do. Like it wants to. Yes. Give, oh give me to the God. count of three. That's I'll a, say cheese. Right. What in the hell are you thinking? It's a mother with a calf, Brandon. That's it's a mama. It's protecting no its cancer. by son. Look, revenge, rege, revenge of the bison. Look, this way she kind of asked for it. I'm sorry. I'm glad she's okay yeah. praying for her, but you kind of asked for it in a way. You know? I totally feel you on this one. Let us know what you guys think. Brandon uh, said praying for her as if that was your prayer. <laughs> that was it. That's all I'm giving. <laughs> Brandon, don't go anywhere. Coming up on DVL, Chrissy Teigen and John Legend's family's growing. We'll show you their new baby bump reveal. We'll be right back. Do you have a life in Welcome back to DBL. Big news for Chrissy Teigen and John Legend. They're expecting baby number three. There's no one here. Chrissy hinted at the pres uh, pre presidency, pregnancy at the end of John's new video for Wild. Take a look at this. Wow. Chrissy later confirmed the news on Twitter by posing with her bump on full display. They're also, gosh, she looks cute. They're also parents to four-year-old Luna and two-year-old Miles. What do you think of this surprise uh, news? What do you think, Erica? Um, first of all, Chrissy Teigen, it was like Houdini in this video because she is in a bikini thong oh the entire time. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, at the end, it's like, like, where did that come from? It's like when I eat a burrito. Like, I'm like all good, and then I'm like, oh, where did that come from? Oh, yeah, I know. Uh, baby number three, remember, Brandon, she was very open about postpartum depression about with Luna, and uh, she's just open in general. Do you expect her to continue that with baby number three? And are you excited? Uh, I 
not that excited uh, about Chrissy Teigen and what John Legend does. But at the same time, at the same time, I absolutely, I love these type of things because, I mean, you you look at that family and you, you see love. Yeah. You know, in this day totally. and age, we need to see, we, we need to see more than that. Totally. But if you're the first two children, when you get older and you see this video, you're going to be like, Mom, what did you do to reveal that you were pregnant with us? You know, the kids, the older kids might feel left out, Tori. And she's going to be like, Daddy didn't drop an album that year. How yeah, about that? That's all. That's all. <laughs> I think they're fine. All right. From baby news to breakups, Miley Cyrus and Cody Simpson have called it quits after 10 months of dating, just in time for her to release some new music. So here's her disco themed video for the single Midnight Sky. Let's all have a listen. Hate it. What do you think, Erica? Good? I think it's good. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I don't think it's a first listen, but this is the second time I listen to it, and I like it. It's a grower. What do you think, Brandon? You into it? Are you gonna disco? It's it's very I, I won't disco, but it's very Madonna-ish. It's I, very Madonna-ish. I agree Madonna -ish. with you. That's I completely all I agree yeah. with you. But I like how she keeps evolving. Oh, I like yeah. artists that just move and you know, they move and they change and they are flexible. You have to. Yeah, let me add another adjective. All right, coming up on DBL, you know him from Veep and Arrested Development, but did you know Tony Hale is a big asthma advocate? He's actually telling me all about it. Coming up next. It's only a matter. Toy Story 4 and Veep, but did you know he's also a longtime asthma patient? Earlier, he told me how he's raising awareness in today's Chatting with the Stars. The last time we talked, you were working on a kid's show and promoting Toy Story 4, and now a lot has changed in the past 10 months, so I just want to ask Tony Hale how Tony Hale's doing. I'm doing good. I'm, uh, we're taking it day to day, you know, as we all are. It's, um, I have a 14 year old, so I think it's a little more challenging on her. Um, switching gears here, health. It's on the top of everyone's minds, especially lung health. I know you are an asthma patient. So what is one thing you want people to know when it comes to asthma? I pretty much had asthma for as long as I can remember since I was a kid. I was that kid who had so many inhalers attached to my body. Mm. Um, but I, over time, I've really gotten better control of it and very grateful for that. And given this opportunity to help educate others on how they can get better control of it, 
I think that's really exciting to me because I know the relief that can come. I know the struggle. And so there's a lot of things I've learned about. One being that asthma is not a one size fits all disease. Mm. I kind of came in thinking I knew everything there was to know about asthma, but it's not. Asthma is very different for each person, very different. Wow. Now, I think asthma, I think lungs, I think coronavirus, just because it's so topical. Are people with asthma right now, asthma patients, are they at a higher risk? I think it's right now, it's just there's so much. What's the scariest is the uncertainty of it all. Yeah. With, with, with anything about COVID right now, but that's what's so cool about this campaign and being able to talk about this is having learned, honestly, in the past six months that nearly seven out of 10 people have an elevated number of a white blood cell called eosinophils. And I thought mainly that asthma was caused from outside triggers, when in actuality, a lot of it comes from inside, possibly through these eosinophils, and that can be detected through a blood test. Mm. And once you get this blood test, you can get a better treatment with your doctor. And what that does is with all this uncertainty, when you have that knowledge and you have a more of an understanding of what specific type of care you need for your specific asthma, it brings that freedom. Because the scary thing about asthma is you feel like your life source is taken away from you. Yeah. You feel like the breath is being taken away. So to have more of a personal care approach with your doctor is everything. There's a website called easthma.com where you can find out more information and then find out where you can um, get this free blood test. Good for you for raising awareness and for giving strength to people who yeah. might feel vulnerable during this time. Because I know asthma patients and I know how vulnerable you can feel when you're in the middle of not being able to breathe. It's an incredibly vulnerable feeling, I would assume, so good on you. Um, I'm gonna switch over to Gary. Your role is Gary on Veep. We have to ask, <laughs> how do you think uh, Selena Meyer would handle the pandemic if she was in charge, and would Gary be on board? Well, I know Selena would not care at all about my asthma. <laughs> I know. Not, she would not care one bit. <laughs> And I, you can, and I can, I can, I can promise you that Gary would have an inhaler in his bag. <laughs> um, but Selena, like, it's all about Selena. Right. It, it, the, the thing that would be a problem with Selena was the fact that she wasn't able to get into the stores to buy a new outfit. That's all she would care about. <laughs> Tony Hale, it is always such a pleasure talking with you again. Thank you for talking to Daily Blast Live. We will be right back. Promotional.
Welcome back to DBL. Road trips have become the most popular way to travel this summer due to the pandemic. And even celebrities are jumping on the trend. We're chatting about it in today's DBL Drive, sponsored by who, y'all? Car Shield. <laughs> Good job, guys. <laughs> Country star Miranda Lambert and her husband recently hit the road in their Airstream to visit family on the East Coast. She told her fans they did a little glamping in Tennessee, Pennsylvania, and New York. Now they're getting ready to pack their bags for a road trip to the West Coast. AAA forecasted that Americans will take 700 million road trips this summer. If that includes you, don't forget to check those travel restrictions in every state before going. When it comes to traveling, for peace of mind, get an auto protection plan with CarShield. CarShield protects their members from the high cost of auto repairs. Call 1-800-505-9619 for a free quote. I do want to get to this comment because we got a lot of comments saying yes about the mandate, but I wanted to get Melissa Magoon Pond who wrote on Facebook, no, I don't wear seatbelts and I won't wear masks unless it's for my job. It should be my right on how to, I want to live my life. And a lot of people feel that way, that if it's a motorcycle or if it's just them, they don't need to wear a helmet if they don't want to, if it's not infringing on other people. And I wanted to just get your quick take on that. How do you feel about that? Well, if you're by yourself, no, you shouldn't have to wear a mask, but you around other people. It's a very valid, <laughs> valid point. Brandon, do you have anything to say to say this is an infringement on what I want to do? No, I, no, I kind of agree with her on the seatbelt part, you know, because it's your life that is ultimately will be affected. But the mask, yes, if you cough, if you say something and a particle gets on someone, then, you know, then they're exposed to it. So seatbelt, I'm with her. The mask, I'm not. Got you. Nice. Well, good combo. We're new every day. We'll see you same time, same place tomorrow. Bye, guys.